Hello, in this brief tutorial about Capture 1.8 I want to show you how Capture 1.8 made black and white really easy. First of all, Capture 1.7 already had the tool for the black and white. In Capture 1.8 this was really improved. Now we have a tool that is really easy to use and do not create problems also if someone like to exaggerate with the regulations. Let me start going with this image. This is just a postcard, a snapshot that I took out of the Duomo in Florence. Uh, it's not an artistic picture, but it works pretty good to show how the black and white works in Capture 1.8. First of all, with all the images, the first things I do is to correct, uh, do the basic corrections on the color image. In this case, I want to go to a daylight uh, white balance because I prefer to have a little bit more neutral the area of the the white areas of the marble on the tower and the Duomo and I just go here and with the iDynamic range tool I try to bring the highlights back in the histogram so I will not have the pure white clouds after this all is very very simple I just get to my color tab here and I select black and white. Black and white uh, already the conversion is quite good uh, but I can go and I can start to change the effect of the black and white with these uh, tools here. Uh, I can regulate how the black and white manage all the different colors. Uh, in this case I know that I have a blue sky I want to make it really darker and more contrasting I can just go down with the blue I can go down with the cyan and the thing that I want you to notice is that also if I go to 100% the sky becomes very very dark but there's no artifacts uh, the image is still really good and there are no problems inserted by the this hundred regulation here so uh, for my taste I can stay around this area this is what I want to do for the sky I see here that the Duomo can be a little bit lighter if I put a little bit of yellow I have here some inserts that red I can see that moving the moving the red slide I can change a lot of these um, details in the tower. In this case I can leave it like it is. After I did it, this the black and white is almost complete. I can go here and can correct a little um, more the image. In this case I want some uh, brightness, add some brightness to the image. Um, and this is almost all. I can just put some clarity if I want and this will give more details to the tower and more contrast to the clouds. That's all. The black and white is done. It's a great black and white. I can export in, uh, with the recipe I want, with the profile I want. I can export on with a black and white profile or I can export in a color profile and uh, that's all is needed to make a very good black and white in Capture 1.8. Another picture I want to show you is this. Um, because there's a tool that is called Split Tone. I start here with the original image. It's a color image. Here too I can just go to Daylight and neutralize a little. Uh, I can go here in my Instagram and my exposure tools and everything seems to be really good I can give a little bit more whites and I can go back and start to play with black and white but in this case also I can regulate the sky make it bluer uh, I can regulate a little the tonality a little bit lighter uh, the roof of the Duomo so there will be more contrast with the sky behind but what I want to show here is the split tones. Split tones basically 
if you want to give a tonality on any or to an image, we were used in the darkroom to use some uh, sepia toning or similar selenium toning, etc. This worked uh, in a way that is not really linear because in the darkroom, uh, usually one tone was th the toning, the, the sepia toning, for example, uh, was more um, visible in the dark area and less visible in the white area because uh, there were more there was more um, silver to work with with the with the toner in the dark areas and less in the white areas so here split tones i can start to go with the saturation so i see what i'm doing and i choose a color for the for my toning let's say i can think this is a good sepia tone uh, here i can reproduce and copy the value so 28 and 28 and i can work with the saturation in a stronger way so in my in the only in the shadow areas in the dark areas of the image i will have much more toning than in the white areas and in this case i see that here is pretty good a replica of the toning I was able to obtain in the darkroom with the sepia toning, with the chemical toning. This can be really nice to do, easy. Uh, here I have exaggerated a little bit the toning of the image uh, to show it in the video, but also to inserting really, uh, really a very light toning. I can obtain uh, very good pictures with uh, this old look in it and this is really great and a third things that I want to show with the black and white is this the film grain film grain is another tool that was really improved in the chapter 1.8 uh, they inserted new kind of grains and if I go with silver ridge for example and I take a look at 100% I can see that it inserted a very very light grain in the in the image you can see here in the smooth tonalities and I can choose how much grain I want and the impact of the grain on the image this can be really nice on the black and white usually is sometimes is too smooth with a little bit of grain you can add some uh, more film feeling that is nice and you can choose different kind of grain Ob obviously there are harsh grain is really visible if I put it up it's really visible uh, I can have fine grain and other kind of grain just experiment with it it's really 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 nice Thank you for watching the video and as usual if you like Capture One you can download it from phase1.com website you can have a 60 days trial for free and if you like it you can buy it or upgrade to from Capture One 7 to Capture One 8 Pro using the coupon code AMB Barbano that you see on the screen right now and you will have 10% discount on the new license or the upgrade. Thanks all for watching.